Down into the bottom edges here, down into 825, we talked about this being a big strike price. It retested, retested, finally got above 835. And what we talked about was if the market could take the Tesla bid at 850s, it would probably rip really fast and really hard. Well, as soon as the price got above 850, look at what happened. That Tesla ripped really fast and really hard, exactly as we discussed, exactly as described on the tin. Everything lined up perfectly to that trade, didn't it? So we see the Tesla, everything's perfect. So again, this overall story. The other things you can obviously see in the background is just simply the price of oil. One was nearly $107 a barrel. Think about that for a second. Nearly $107 a barrel. Now, why is that significant? Because one of the things we talked about yesterday was fundamentals. The idea that you don't suddenly forget about fundamentals ever, and this idea that it's always something that you remind yourself about, when you start thinking about fundamentals, you start considering the concept of why the fundamental was so important. Now, obviously, when we talk about the fundamentals yesterday, we actually did a full tweet about it in a discussion. We did a classroom about it yesterday. <coughs> and in the classroom yesterday, we talked about the oil news. Understanding fundamentals is so important to act on surprise news releases. We had a lovely early buy as insiders bought oil prior to the news. Crack and Brent skews gave away the trade five to ten minutes before it came out. However, you need to act instantly. But that's not all. Why else do you need to act instantly if you're going to make money on that trade? You need to make sure you remember that that's what one of the big macro drivers is. So when we see that big macro driver that Germany drops opposition to European Union embargo on Russian oil, according to government officials close to the W. SJ Wall Street Journal, EU oil ban is imminent, but no date has been set yet. Now, that's we talked about this yesterday. We said this is going to cause oil to potentially drive uh, uh, quite a bit, potentially drive quite a bit higher, especially if it actually translates into a sanction. If it actually translates into a complete blockade of Russian oil coming into Europe full stop, then, of course, that's got to drive oil prices perhaps up to 120, 130, 140, 150 dollars a barrel. It's got to. Because otherwise, you know, where the hell is Europe going to get any oil from? Well they're going to have to spend more money to get it from uh, from from uh, from Saudi, from OPEC, uh, from Venezuela, from anywhere else that's willing to sell it, right? They're going to have to pump a lot of oil. Well that's going to put a massive a massive supply problem into the system. Uh, yes, of course, the Russian oil is going to still be sloshing around in India and China, for example, but that's probably going to be at a discount price. And uh, we can obviously understand that this is why uh, we need to remember about the basic fundamental background drivers that we have to play with every single day in the markets. If we forget these things, we're giving away a huge advantage to the guys that remember this stuff, right? That's why we did it in classroom yesterday. Anyway, welcome in, guys. In terms of data, let's run through what we've seen so far this morning. It's been quite a lot of numbers, but nothing of any uh, real significance. Uh, pop, uh, private sector credit and all for whatever reason, 0.4%. French consumer spending was a drop of 1.3%, quite a big number, actually. Uh, flash GDP numbers from France came in at zero. Yeah, not very much, not very important. French inflation numbers on a month-on-month -month came in a little bit higher than expected at 0.4%. We've seen German GDP numbers coming in at 0.2 on the numbers. Uh, so we've seen a lot of numbers uh, coming out, which are not really market moving. As far as the big number this morning, the European CPI numbers coming in very punchy at 7.5%, uh, with the core number coming in a little bit higher than they'd even expected on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, core number coming in at 3.5% instead of at the 3.2% prior of 2.9%, of course, so inflation still ramping up just a little bit. We'll get another clue about inflation this afternoon. Uh, we are t uh, 13 minutes ahead of the US numbers. We do have quite an important number. The core PCE price index number is always a, a useful uh, uh, metric. It's a month-on-month -month number, very, very uh, definitely watched by the Fed, made mention of several times by Fed members, and they're forecasting a 0.3% month-on-month increase against a prior increase of 0.4. Now, it's not the individual 
month on month. It's obviously the cumulative effect of these PCE numbers. And if we look at this chart here, you'll see that the 2021, the PCE, the price index has been significantly ramped up against the prior levels, which are all usually quite static at 0 0.1, 0 0.2. You can see that we're running a kind of average almost at 0 0.5 just now. So that's a real big ramp up. So uh, a lot of people would like to see, especially the Fed, that they would like to see that PCE dropping back down into the 0 0.2, 0 0.3 level. And that's obviously what they're hoping for. We'll see what happens. This afternoon at 2.45 London, we've got Chicago PMIs, slight downtick. We've got the University of Michigan numbers coming out 65.8 against the 65.7 prior. Uh, so University of Michigan consumer sentiment numbers coming in a little bit hotter than the prior numbers, but not exactly market moving. And that takes us into the weekend. Now into this weekend, actually, we have Cation manufacturing PMIs out of uh, China. These numbers used to be very, very important, but they've been fiddled. Uh, they used to be a kind of independent resource, uh, but it's kind of fiddled now and it's more of a government resource. But the PMI numbers, slightly disappointing from China, but they have been experiencing some uh, some of their own lockdown problems. Nay luck, China. So they're experiencing some of their own lockdown problems. So we are expecting to see those PMI numbers just dropping off just a little bit and obviously in slight contraction territory um, for the manufacturing numbers going into Saturday, going into this weekend. Anyway, welcome in, guys. Hope you're all good, ready to rock and roll. Get ready to get uh, suited and booted and kick some ass this afternoon. It is a Friday after all, and I'm going to grab a little bit of lunch. I'll be back shortly.